we understand from scriptures that the blessings of the Lord is what culminate in the breakthroughs of man. And Abraham was old and stricken in age, and the Lord has blessed him in everything. Genesis 24, verse 1. And God said to him in Genesis 12, Get thee out of thy country, to a land that I will show you, and I will there make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will bless you. It is the blessing of God that makes men. It is the blessings of God that make men. And I will bless you and make thy name great. So it is his blessings that blesses and makes great. And I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And his blessings are irreversible. And I will bless him that blesses you and him that causes you I will cause. And then came Jacob. I won't let you go until you bless me because blessing made my father. I need the blessing. And God said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, no, your name shall no longer be Jacob but Israel. It is his blessing that changes names. God is changing somebody's name here today. <laughs> and then came Isaac. The man went forward. He was strong. The Lord blessed him. And the Philistines envy them. It is his blessings that turns you to the envy of your world. Now, somebody is encountering God's blessing in life today. That looks like you. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. He said, The blessings of thy father has prevailed in your life above your progenitors. It is by his blessings that men stand out. Therefore, I decree an encounter with his blessings for you today. Yeah. Father, thank you for where you have brought us to as individuals in our various businesses and careers. And thank you for where you are taking us to. Therefore, Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open a new chapter to everyone today. Open a new chapter to everyone here today. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand and please, you may be seated. Welcome to the second in the series of our business and career breakthrough service. I believe this miracle service is opening a new chapter to everyone present here. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Who are you to call for a career and breakthrough service? Where do you get your authority from? In Luke 9, verse 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. He gave them power, then he gave them authority. And that became the platform for their outstanding accomplishment. 
they had power and they had authority from God to get on the job. Now chapter 10 verse 1, he gave them power. And they went forth and said, even devils were subject to us in your name when they returned. He said, I beheld sit and fall like lightning from heaven. Because when I sent you forth, I gave you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the paths of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you as you do. He gave them power he gave, gave them authority so they could deliver. Jesus came down. He said, the spirit of the Lord support me for he has anointed me. He has authorized me. He has empowered me. To be anointed means to be empowered and to be authorized. He has anointed me and empowered me to preach the glad tidings to the poor. To set at liberty them that are bruised, to open the prison gates. Now, you see, he knew the source of his authority and he could deliver his mission in the grand style. Paul the apostle came and said, Unto me, who am least of all saints, is this grace given to make all men see what is the mystery in the fellowship of Christ. He knew that something was given him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 or to 11. Peter came on the scene and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give unto thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He knew he was given authority to get the sick back on their feet. At the onset of this meeting, I'd like you to, I'd like to show you my source of authority for calling you together. In the early hours of 27th of August, 1987, I was in one of those embassy, embassy suites in Tulsa, Oklahoma, getting ready to be on my way to California for a meeting. And then came a mighty visitation of the spirit in the hotel room. And he said in conclusion, Arise, get back home and make my people rich. Neat and clear. It was so urgent, I couldn't wait to carry through with my programs. I busted a major convention. I mean, I tell you something. That will make it look like pride, arrogance, and lack of integrity. Because I heard God too clearly to pretend not to hear him. So God sent me as one of his frontline agents for rescuing the people from this part of the world from going down the drain. Arise! Get back home and make my people rich. Why contemplating on this light broke out? And Paul the Apostle said, as poor and yet making many rich. That was my powerful impetus for undertaking this mandate. And the first thing I did when I came back was to set up what we call breakthrough in business seminars that head in hotels and it will be interesting for you to know that the first one head in my degree at lake chad hotel the first one get back home and make my people rich so i went to the region of poverty to attack it and that came on and on and on as poor and yet making many rich. That means you don't need to look like it. Just go and declare what I've given you to do. And as I obeyed him, he began to turn destinies around. 
To the glory of God, this ministry has remained a frontliner in promoting, in declaring the prosperity of the saints for the last days. And not only saying it, but also proving it. Somebody here will emerge a living proof from here. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Then in 1989, I had another visitation. On, on the 17th of July, 1989, sorry, 19th of July, 1989, the Lord came and visited me in the room saying, Arise, get down to Lagos and raise me a people. Get down to Lagos and raise me a people. Arise, get down to Lagos and raise me a people. It was so strong. The same day, I dispatched someone from Kaduna down to Lagos. By September of that year, Winners Chapel was born. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? And we entered Lagos promoting the breakthrough in business seminar month by month in the hotels until the hotel became too choky, can't take people anymore. People were fainting under the heat. So the church was built as a breakthrough platform for God's people. Arise, get down to Lagos, and raise me a people. Arise, get down to Lagos, and raise me a people. Every time God gives an order, he backs it up with authority. So we are not on this assignment in want of what to do. We are in pursuit of the delivery of a divine mandate. Everyone under the sound of my voice today is ordained a giant for the kingdom. Every one here is ordained a giant for the kingdom. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. It's clear, therefore, from those two major encounters that this ministry has a very clear breakthrough mandate. A very clear breakthrough mandate. Then two visions, visionary encounters followed. God sent the same thing twice. 15th of, September, of July 76, 15 7, 96, and 17 2, 97. Here is what God said. I'm going to read it to you. I have made Lagos your first headquarters from where you will shake your world. Now hear this. That means the Lagos church is a family of world shakers. Family of what? That this church is a congregation of world shakers. Let all the world shakers in the house shout glory. From where you will shake your world. He said, build with me a people to be envied a people of attraction, a people of honor, and by them I will storm the world. Now hear this. Everyone in this family, by this prophetic mandate, is a man and a woman to be envied. If you think you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. That means every man and woman on this platform is a person of attraction. That means 10 men will be holding to your skirt saying, we will go with you. Strangers will be running after God through you. He said, a people of honor. Everyone in this family is a honorable member of the kingdom. 
you are not an ordinary person. You are an honorable person. You are an honorable person. So whatever is contrary to honor, whatever depicts shame and reproach, must not be identified with you. Shout with me, glory. Shout with me, glory. He said, and by them I will storm the world. So who are the people gathered here? Come and say, world stormers. Say it loud, world stormers. It's important for you to follow through this prophetic mandate so you can be able to plug into it and key into it. He said, build with me a people of depth. Depth. D-E-P-T-H. A revolutionary army by depths and revelations. And I would take this world by storms. That means this army of men will be reigning by deep insight. By what? They will be operating by the depths of divine revelations. These will be men and women who are operating on the mystery wavelength of the kingdom. They are operating on the mystery frequency. They are not operating by the stories. They are not quoting scriptures. They are riding the wings of mysteries. They are riding what? These are men and women riding the waves of mysteries. Riding the waves of mysteries. Riding the waves of mysteries. A revolutionary army, he said, and by them, I will take this world by storms. Men, who are the ones here? Come and say, war takers. So we have an army of world shakers, world stormers, and world takers. That means in your profession, you will take the world. He said, I have given you the people, now build them with me. Give them purpose, impart visions to them, school them into exploits. Who are the ones gathered here? Men and women of exploits. Come and say, men and women of exploits. You see, you cannot partake of the fulfillment of a prophecy you don't believe. You can, he said, and blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. No prophecy fulfills itself. It is the veracity of the believer that provokes fulfillment of prophecy. It's not just, okay, it will happen somehow. It may happen. I don't know whether I'm still within the age bracket where it could happen. I can't tell, but in case it happens, why not? It doesn't happen by guessing. It's active engagement of the forces of faith that brings prophecies of fulfillment. Active engagement. Active engagement of the forces of faith is what guarantees fulfillment of prophecy. So we have on this platform world shakers world stomachs and world takers as many as in the house let me hear your loudest glory shout it as if you are sure you are one of them shout it convincingly he said school them that means train them into exploits you can't wish men into exploits you train into exploits hey man <laughs> david had some young fellows that would be likened to lagos area boys people without identity they had no training they were raw ruffians he gathered them into a training camp and they became the mighty men of david Man, they were trained into exploits. Abraham armed his own army, his own trained army, born in his house, and they pursued the enemy. 
and overtook them and rescued Lot. Schooled them into exploit. And he said, release them into their destinies. Every destiny that's been withheld, I command a release today. <laughs> Every aspect of your destiny that is being withheld, I command a release today. <laughs> Every aspect of any man's destiny that is being bastardized, I command a release today. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, walk with me, my son, as I raise a new generation of saints by your hands. What do you have in this house? A new generation of saints. Mm. Men and women taking supernatural command in their various fields of endeavor. A new generation of saints. Men and women that they will be said about them. These that turn the world upside down have come either also. They are the people that are here. Can I hear your loudest amen? Let me hear your loudest amen. So the winner's family is a breakthrough company. And the company you keep is what determines what accompanies you. The winner's family is a breakthrough company. <laughs> there was a little a, a city here in Nigeria when we started planting churches in city. They said, look, we can give any other church room in this place, so, but when you give winner's room, they take over. You give winner's room, they do what? There is a takeover anointing on this commission. What do I call it? There's a takeover anointing on this commission and the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Genesis 13 verse 5. And Lord also, which went forth with the blessed, had great possessions. Lord also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and hearts and tents. He only went with. He was not called. He went with the cord and the blessedness of the calling came upon him. <clears throat> Listen to me. You have come into this breakthrough company. The virtues of breakthrough that's upon this commission and upon this anointed is your portion. I said, it's 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 your portion. Somebody's breaking forth already. You know, he that walks with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That means he that walks with the blessed shall be blessed. You keep a breakthrough company, you enjoy breakthroughs. You keep a failure company, you become a victim of failures. The company you keep Keep is vital to the future that awaits you. The company you keep is vital to the future that awaits you. I belong to a ministry family where they don't know failure. And so the failure proof anointing on that family is evident in my life. I belong to the Hages family where you maintain relevance until death. And you maintain stronger relevance after death. I belong to the Copeland's family where they don't talk lack nor beg for things. Where they don't borrow nor beg. And they show you. The company you keep is vital. Don't leave the church and go keep company with devils. They will tear down your, your treasures. Somebody's blessed in this house. 
Maybe the challenge with your business today is that you have tied with unbelievers in doing it. And you have turned God off. And now you are struggling to prevail. But by strength shall no man prevail. We prevail by blessings. And blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but whose delight is in the law of his God upon it, he doth maintain day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. No dry season. You keep a godly company, you don't suffer dry season. Thank you, Father. I therefore speak by the Spirit of the Lord. God sent me into this world as one of his principal agents of breakthrough. God sent me to this world as one of his principal agents of big breakthrough. Get down home and usher my people into realms of breakthroughs. And I came back home and I began to see them just breaking forth. And see another army of men breaking forth into a new realm today. Every time God calls, he commits himself to deliver the purpose of that calling. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. And blessed is, he said, he said, faith we see that calleth thee who also will do it. I'm speaking to you what he put in my mouth and God's integrity is committed to confirm it. Therefore, I decree the birth of an army of business, professional, and career giants here. Yeah. Today is the clear, the bad day of an army of giants in this house. Today is the clear, your bad day as a giant in the kingdom. Today is declared your bad day as a giant in the kingdom. You know, the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. <laughs> God can send a man as a light to a nation. He can send a man as a light to a continent. He can send a man as a light to the world. And you all know that light shines brightest at source. As the Lord liveth, the breakthrough mandate on this commission and the breakthrough anointing upon my life breaks forth in your life today. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8. The Lord sent a word into Jacob and it's lighted upon Israel. Psalm 36 and verse 9, speaking about God, he said, Psalm 36 and verse 9, in thy light, for with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. So there are people sent as light bearers and by their light, we see light. There are apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists who are sent to the body for the perfecting of the spiritual understanding of the faith, of the saints, till we all come into the unity of faith because it's spiritual understanding that begets faith. So they are sent to show us what we don't see so our spiritual understanding can, can blossom and we can come to the same level of faith that you're operating. Somebody's breaking forth here. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. God has set up men and women in the body of Christ who are light bearers and through whose light we see light. Through their light we see light. We saw a man in scriptures by name Zechariah. Zechariah came forth as a prophet with a very clear mandate from heaven. And there was a young man by name Uzziah. 
who became king in Israel. And the Bible said, he sought God, that is Uzziah, sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord in the light that Zechariah had, God made them to prosper. Amen. He didn't have the light. He was trading the light that Zechariah had. And the Bible said, God made them to prosper. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. God made them to prosper. God gave him victory, verse 7, against his enemies. Verse 14, he was marvelously helped. He invented engines. Now listen to me. Under this breakthrough anointing, I release an army of inventors in the kingdom. People creating and generating solutions to lifetime problems. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. One of our young men testified today in the service that he invented an electric iron that does not require power. Amen. So whether light is taken off or light is on, it doesn't matter. You can still be neat going to work. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you know, he went through Bible school and then the heavens opened. He just left, he said, he got to a point where I couldn't move forward. So he decided to go to Bible school for three weeks and then the heavens opened. A revolutionary army by depths of revelations. By depths. And then the solution came. Somebody's breaking forth here today. Yeah. What is important is to assess the light that guarantees a flight. Whether you got it directly or got it through anointed vessels, just get the light. <laughs> By the light given to Copeland, I, had, I saw light. I was reading his book and that of his wife, and then light sprang up. Thou hast the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. Shall we see light? So there are men and women planted in the body of Christ as light bearers. And as we encounter the light that they had, we enjoy the flight that they enjoy. Somebody's breaking forth with this morning. Yeah. That looks like you. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Now listen to this. In this prophetic breakthrough empowerment session, what are you to expect? One, expect to be quickened as the word is going right now. Expect to be quickened. Expect the sleepy aspect of your spiritual life to jack back to life. John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are spirit and they are alive. Expect the quickening power in the world to come upon you. What am I to expect as I'm listening to this prophetic word? Expect to be quickened. Expect the sleepy part of you to bounce back to life. Expect a spiritual awakening by the anointing on the world. What am I to expect under this anointed world? Number two, <laughs> expect to be imparted. As the word is going, Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Spirit entered into me as he spake unto me <laughs> and set me upon my feet that I had him that spake with me. And the Spirit. <laughs> 
that is upon the man speaking enters into me as he spake unto me. I sat in a meeting years ago and here was this anointed man speaking. If the ministration of death be glorious, how much more glorious shall the ministration of the Spirit be? And immediately light sprang up. Not only the spring of out of light, something began tickling in my intellect. The next exam I wrote, sir, I made 100 100. 100 he came to me and said, Lord, I'm understanding this too much. My brain almost exploded. Why? He painted a picture of the glory, the intellectual beauty in Daniel. And that whatever it is then, it's not compatible to what is available to us now. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So it was not the revelation, it was an entrance. There was an entrance of his spirit. Now expect to be imparted with a breakthrough unction. As this world is going on, expect the spirit, the breakthrough anointing to enter into you. Expect the breakthrough unction to enter into you. You can't practice what the spirit does. You only need to be imparted to operate in it. From that time on to tomorrow, this brain has very strange capacity for absorbing, analyzing, and dealing with issues without stress. Somebody is encountering something right here. Can I, can I tell you this? There's a breakthrough anointing on my life. It is so tangible. It's so handleable. It's provenly undeniable. You can tap into it. And the Spirit entered into me. And he spoke unto me. And set me up upon my feet. And I had him that spoke with me. So we don't just get informed or enlightened by anointed men, when they get on the platform, we are imparted with the same spirit. I encountered the man, T.L. Osborne, 1976, in a very dramatic encounter. I've shared that many, many times, and I had the Holy Ghost voice for the first time. When we met real life for the first time in 1990, he said, as I listen to you, David, it's as if we have always known all of the times. I said, it's true. The same spirit operating in him entered into me as I was reading his writings in the purpose of, Pente purpose of Pentecost. It was so tangible, it was so real. I am to see the duplication of this breakthrough anointing on the life of every winner. It speaks in all areas of life. Therefore, receive it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Expect to be imparted. Number three. Expect the visions of your life to be unveiled. <laughs> Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophet. So God multiplies visions by the ministry of prophets. As they begin to speak, he begins to unveil the next chapters of your life. So in this meeting, somebody's catching a new light. <laughs> As Kennedy again was speaking in July 1986, in the course of the message, I was caught up into heaven. <laughs> I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. He was speaking. I was in the gallery. I wasn't in the main bowl. And then God brought me into visions and revelations as he was speaking. The vision is still here today. My son David, 
the button has been passed over to you. I saw his face transfigured to the face of a little baby. I saw with my eyes. And I saw oil dripping down the, flowing down his cheeks. And something in that was fired into my spirit. I began groaning and crying and wailing and sobbing. In the midst of it, my son David, the button has been passed over to you. Somebody is taking a button here today. <laughs> Let me hear your loudest amen if you are there. Somebody is taking a button here today. Somebody is receiving a breakthrough button today. You are receiving a breakthrough button today. Somebody is receiving a breakthrough button today. You are receiving a breakthrough button today. You are receiving a breakthrough button today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. What am I to expect as this anointing begins to flow by the word of the Lord? Expect to be turned into another man. Is somebody turning right here? <laughs> man, how they turn from that journey in 1986, everybody saw the difference. Everybody did what? Everybody saw the difference. It was clearer than Sprite. Clearer than Sprite. Everybody saw the difference. Somebody is here today. <laughs> Not even tomorrow. By the time you get home today, they will see the difference. <laughs> I was only away for one week. I came back, the difference was too clear. One of the old men that met me in that place also lived in Kaduna. And when he came back, he came to our church for the first time. And when he was a baby, this man was about 76. When he was a baby, his stepmother carried him up and he fell down. And from babyhood, he carried waist pain. And when he entered the church first day after my return, he said it was like you are unwinding a chain from the buttock of a monkey. Ooh. Ah, he knew liberty for the first time since childhood. He knew liberty. That is the unction on Kenneth again became instantly evident. Became what? Instantly evident. There is somebody here, the breakthrough anointing upon his servant, under whose teaching you are sitting right now, will be tangibly evident in your life. To be turned into another man. For Samuel, chapter ten, verse five and six. He said, "You will come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and you will. It will come to pass that thou shalt come thither into the city. You come into the midst of prophets, and as they begin to prophesy, he said, they sh they pro you shall prophesy with them.' Verse." Six, and you shall be turned into another man. Abba. He was turned, his status was supernaturally changed. He was turned into another man. You appear in your business place tomorrow as another man. You appear in your offices tomorrow as another man. You appear in your home today as another man. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> expect to be turned into another man. Expect to be turned into another man. And um, verse 10 to 12, it came to pass that this man, Saul, became a proverbial success. He saw also among the prophets. Somebody's living here today you'll be turned to the next proverbial success. Yeah. Your breakthrough will become a reference point. Yeah. I said, your breakthrough will become a reference point. Yeah. Your breakthrough will become a reference point. Yeah. Your breakthrough will become a reference point. Yeah. 
Your breakthrough will become a reference point. 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 Thank you, Father. My prayer today is that somebody here will return as another man. Yeah. You are that person, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You are that person, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You are that person, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. How to activate prophetic blessings. I'll take you through a few keys on activating prophetic blessings. <laughs> How to activate prophetic blessings. It's clear from what I've said thus far that the breakthrough battle is not to the strong, neither is the breakthrough race to the swift nor yet favor in your pursuit to men of skill. It is the blessings of God that makes the difference. Can I hear your amen? amen. Proverbs 10.22, it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich, and that without struggles, and that without struggles, <laughs> and that without struggles. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich, and that without struggles, and that without struggles. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and that without struggles. God blessed Abraham and he became very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. He was rich because he was blessed. He was not blessed because he was rich. He was rich because he was blessed. The man went forward and worked strong. He became very great. And the Lord blessed him. Isaac went forward, not because he was very strong, but he was blessed. He was not blessed because he went forward. He went forward because he was blessed. After 21 years of struggle, Jacob still knew there's a place, a vacuum of blessing. He said, God, I won't let you go until you bless me because my forefathers were made by blessings. I cannot be made by sweat. Bless me. He said, okay. You have prevailed. He traveled for 21 years. He prevailed one night. You have struggled for years. Now it's time to live as a miracle. 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 Genesis 32 and verse 24 to 28. Thy name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For say, Prince, thou hast power with God and with man, and has prevailed and has prevailed verse 28 and has prevailed so we prevail by blessings not by struggles not by sweatings we prevail by blessings we prevail by blessings this generation must come humble and understand the real myth behind breakthrough amen we must come humble come down from your pride ride on horsebacks and come back to yourself Men in the kingdom only prevail by blessings. We command breakthroughs by blessings, not by sweaters.
How do we activate the breakthrough blessings from prophets? Breakthrough blessings from prophets. One, receive them as prophets. Receive them as prophets. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet, he shall receive the prophet's reward. Matthew 10, 41. Don't receive a prophet as your friend. You can't tap into his breakthrough prophetic blessings. You must receive him as a prophet. Don't receive a prophet as your son in case you have one. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet, he shall receive a prophet's reward. This is so important. There are God sent prophets, there are self tied prophets. But when you come across a God sent to you prophet, the prophet sent to you by God. Receive him as a prophet, then you can tap into the fullness of the breakthrough blessings that he carries. Receive him as a prophet. The true woman said to the husband, I perceive this is a man of God. I perceive this is a man of God. <laughs> Let's make room for him. Now, anytime he's passing through town, he may have where to stay. And they make an upper room for him. And their case was close as far as having children was concerned. That he said to Elisha, Oh, man of God, don't deceive me. <laughs> that is, my womb is removed. My fallopian tubes are gone. My ovaries are gone. Nothing reproductive remains inside me. <laughs> but by receiving him as a man of God, God is taught her dignity. God is taught our dignity. He received Elisha as a man of God. And then the blessing of a man of God fell on that house. Something is falling on your life right now. 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 God, in introducing the Geo to me, who now is my father in the Lord, he said, send for my servant Adeboye, and I will have him lay hands on you. Now, God introduced him as his servant. So I received him as a man of God, and he came and opened up the future of the ministry without any natural discussion. Somebody see here, name me here. February 5, 1986, the Lord said to me, Arise, get down to Benin and meet my servant there. What? Your servant? Benson Idahosa? Your servant? He said, Get down to Benin and meet my servant there. And I took off as usual the following day, ran down to Benin. And the Lord told him, Inside this room, he said, Get down to the door and open the door. There's a young man from the north. I sent him to you. He has had many bad things about you, but I sent him. And then when we sat down, I said, sir, by the reasons of what I've heard about you, I never thought we'd ever see together. He said, go to me before you enter. You see, when you receive a prophet as a prophet, you encounter the prophet's reward. Please listen to me. If you listen to men, you'll be deaf to God. Those who listen to men hardly hear from God. If you want to hear from God, open your spiritual ears and hear. We are flowing in dimension of fortune today because of some things that happened. 1987, I placed a seed in this man, man of God. He didn't ask me. He didn't need it. God told me what to do. And as I placed that seed in his hand to show that I didn't need it, he said, bring forth your hand. And he said, you put it back in my hand. He said, I placed this seed back in your hand. 
He didn't count it. And I've just told him it's dollars. I didn't tell him how much it was. He said, I placed this back in your hand. And from today, this hand will never know dryness. That was November 1987. Receive a prophet as a prophet. And the prophet's rewards will be flowing unhindered in your life. Is somebody still listening to me? That is how one of the ways to activate the breakthrough blessings of a prophet. Number two. Have faith in his ministry. Believe in his ministry. Believe in his ministry. The ministry of the prophet you don't believe cannot prosper you. Believe in the Lord your God shall be established and believe also in his prophets and so shall ye prosper. You have received this person, now you must believe his ministry. You must believe his ministry. Believe his ministry. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. I'm saying this to you because I am a beneficiary of prophetic blessings. And I know how to activate them. He taught me on time how to activate prophetic blessings. And I'm flowing in them. Man, my wars have ceased years ago. Jesus could not perform any major miracle. And he marveled at the unbelief. So the flow of prophetic blessings is a function of the quality of your faith in the ministry of that prophet. The quality of your faith in the ministry of that prophet. Number three. Honor him in your heart. Honor him in your heart. You know, it's possible to honor anybody with your lips. It's all a matter of courtesy. And after you turn back, you ease. He will think I respect him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ease. He said, these people draw near me with their mouth. And with their lips do they honor me, but their heart is far from me. Isaiah 29 and verse 13. It is the honor of the heart that counts. That is what entitles you to the honor virtues of that prophet. Every prophet of God carries divine honor virtues. And only men and women that honor them from their heart can connect with the flow of such virtues. You know, he said to Moses, and you will take some of the honor upon you and place on him. So every prophet carries divine honor virtues. <laughs> you know that in Numbers 27, when he said you should call on the 70 elders, and then you lay your hands upon them, and then they will bear the burden with you. Then he called Joshua and said, you will also present him before Eliezer and put some of the honor on you upon him. So every prophet carries honor honor virtues and only men and women that honor them from the heart can assess it glory to god only men and women that honor them from their heart can assess it Before I became a boy, a, a man of God, I was one of Egan's boys and one of Copeland's boys. Before anybody becomes a man, he must first be a boy. Before you become a boy, you are first a kid. You can't be born a man. 
I was carrying against books on my head from place to place, advertising the blessings in the books. I've never seen the man in my eye with my eyes. But the blessing in the book was turning me on. Many more needs to see this. And the same honor of spreading the word of faith through the print media fell on me. I'm not sure that any other author in this charismatic movement has our volume in circulation. Our books are used today as manuals in major countries of the world in their Bible studies. Honor them. Then you partake of the honor that they carry. Honor them before you can partake of the honor that they carry. Honor them. Honor them. There are no self-made men in the world. Yes, it is the inputs of others that make men. Honor them from your heart. Don't pose as if you found these things. Honor the sources from where you got them from. Everybody in this church, in this ministry, knows Kenneth again without meeting them. I mean, I agree with that. Everybody knows Copeland. Most of you have met him. Everybody knows Osborne. Because the honor that is due to them is given them spiritually. He taught me who the Holy Ghost is. Again, taught me what faith is all about. Copeland taught me what prosperity is all about. And here we were one day here in Canaan land. We were there at the guest house and then the man Copeland said to me, David, stand up. And I stood up. Then he removed his coat. He said, put it on. And I put it on. He said, it fits. I said, this must be a mantle. He said, yes, you got it. He said, the Lord just spoke to me now that all the suits I came with on this trip be dropped for you. <laughs> so I bodily carried this mantle after running after him since 1977. I love his name. I love his look. I love his family. I honor his language. What he says is law to me. And God said, boy, you are due for that honor. Friends, when I will be 80, like he's going to now, I will be running around the world stronger than he's running around the world. Yeah. You can't buy that with money. If there are four more services today, I can handle it. And if I feel like keeping you here till 4, 8 p.m., I'll keep you here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Nothing wrong. I'd like you to understand this. You need to know how to maximize these blessings. The honor must be heart-based, heart-seated honor, not mouth-faked, but heart-seated honor entitles you to it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How to activate the breakthrough blessings of a prophet? Receive his person, believe his ministry, and then honor him from your heart. Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? We had a season in town, and it was a season of uncertainties. There was famine in the land, and a woman was about to eat her last food with her son so they could die. You don't die by sickness, you die for lack of food in those days. And then showed up a prophet carrying a breakthrough unction on him and said to the woman, Make for me first. And he said, I have only one last meal for me and my son to eat and die. He said, make for me first, and then the cruise of us shall not fail, and the barrel of flour shall not finish. 
First Kings 17, verse 8 to 15, the widow of Zarephath had a breakthrough encounter with the prophetic ministry of Elijah. And God supernaturally blessed him. One way of activating prophetic blessings is through prophet's offerings. What do I call it? Prophet offerings. Prophet offerings. Prophet offerings. True prophets don't need it. And I think you should know what I'm talking about. True prophets don't need it. It is the fake ones that can verse for it. True prophets will never need it because true prophets are divinely supplied for. Elijah was feeding fat at the brook called Cherith. The boss of the hour bringing him cake and flesh. And he was by the brook. God had to dry up the brook so he could go and rescue the widow. Elijah was being divinely supplied for. He would never need it. But prophet's offerings or prophetic seed is one of the triggers of prophetic blessings. Can I hear your loudest amen? And so it came to pass that the barrel of flour was not exhausted and the cruise of oil did not fail according to the word of Elijah. So these prophets, we can trigger their blessings through prophetic seed. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. This include prophetic financial seed. It includes prophetic service seed. Here is Elisha that was pouring water on the hand of Elijah. <laughs> it includes service seed. It includes Honor seed, like I taught you all. You can activate prophetic blessings by your financial seed. You can activate it by your service seed. You do services for such individuals as opportunities open up to you. Can I hear your amen? I had a call, March 1990. My son, I said, sir, meet me in Makodi tomorrow. He said, well, first, are you available? I said, what about? He said, to meet me in Makodi tomorrow, I'm available. And I came to discover I wasn't asked to come and do anything. Just to come and stand by him. And as I came, he said, so you came? I said, I did. He said, come on here, have your bath in my room. I said, no, there is a bedroom in my room too in the hotel. Come, get in there. And I finished having my bath. The anointing was in a hurry to bless. As I finished toweling and tying my towel, I said, Nida, so I impart to you from today the gift of on time. Before the needs arise, the supplies will be waiting. That's where your ministry is coming from. It was a call for service, very inconvenient. Driving Kadron to Makodi was not a cheap journey. But a prophet that I receive as a prophet and whose ministry I believe in has called for me, so I'm on my way going. And I waited first day, second day, there was no particular assignment. Come and do this for me. No. It was a test of stewardship. It was a test of discipleship. It was a test of sonship. Somebody's blessed here. And see what I came back with. 
that the pastors have never gathered to say, oh Lord, send us money. We are not a straight jacket. We've never been one. Not even when Faith Tabernacle was under construction. Somebody's here. Your tight corners are over today. Can I hear your loudest amen if you are there? Can I hear your loudest amen if you are there? Let me begin to conclude by saying there is a prophet in your midst. Amen. And among other, others, he has a breakthrough mandate for this generation. And he has it first and foremost towards you. Because light shines brightest at source. Therefore, I decree the supernatural bath of giants from this house today. The same way I'm flowing in the virtues of Egan, of Copeland, of Osborne, of Enoch, Adeboye, of Besson in the Hosa, I decree your flow in this anointing. I decree that this breakthrough anointing begins to have expressions in your life. In the name of Jesus. That's the way it works. Remember, it is the spirit that quickened the flesh profits nothing. The word has spoken to you. They are spirit and they are life. As I conclude, please note that the Bible is not a religious book. It's a manual for living. It's a manual for living. As we conclude in this great, great service, What we have said today does not cancel what you had yesterday. It only goes to complement it. Your fundamental covenant responsibilities remain in place or must remain in place. Kingdom priority lifestyle that brings to the blessings of Agai chapter 1 and verse 5 to 13. <laughs> Tithing as a lifestyle, both for you as a person and the business you represent. Diligence in your business. Doing business as business, not as domestic affairs. For C.S. a man that's diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. It's not enough to be faithful. You must also be skillful. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I've been faithful over a few things now, beloved over many things. Whatever you may have heard today does not cancel the things that were told you before. They only go to complement it. All that with a prophetic seal of blessing makes you a living wonder. All that with a prophetic seal of blessing makes you a living wonder. No matter the encounters I had with Copeland, if I refuse to be a tighter, it will never have expression. No matter the encounter I had with the Lord, if the church had not remained a tithing church, we would have been stranded like others. A man of God said to me, can you please tell us the secret behind the prosperity of this church? I said, you won't like it if I tell you. He said, why, why not? I, I mean, I can't be asking a question at my age without being interested in the answer. I said, you won't like it, oh. He said, I will like it. <laughs> and when I gave it to him, he <laughs> didn't like it. He didn't like it. You know, the things that speak tomorrow, they, are, they always appear bitter today. The things that speak tomorrow will first appear bitter today. Every drug that works is bitter in content. So they wrap it up in capsules. So it can break its bitterness inside. 
And the Bible says the word of the Lord, when he gave it to that man in Revelation chapter 10, he said it was bitter in my belly, but sweet in my mouth. Bitter in my belly. 9th of, 4th of September 1984, the Lord gave me the bitter bill of corporate tithing. This church engaged in it with all madness. And the sweetness is too sweet. Too sweet. We have a covenant in our manual. Any generation in this church that goes out borrowing has broken the edge. And the serpent is sure to bite them. It is a, an eternally borrowing free, begging free institution. Because if a, a veil was opened and we entered into the blessings inside it. So get back to work. Even the sky is not your limit. Get back to work. Even the sky is not your limit. In our own generation of charismatics, no church has dear two universities, whether in America or in Europe. Find out. But we're about starting the third one right now. We have the resources to get it done. Friend, stay up. I said, even the sky is not your limit. Even the sky, said, I will set you above all nations of the earth. All nations. There are no developed nations, there are only developed people. There are people standing here, sitting down here today before the Lord. As the Lord live it, the so-called developed world will be looking to you for help. Somebody believe it, stand up and shout the loudest, amen. Roar the loudest, amen. Lift up your two hands, everybody, and begin to enter into those prophetic words concerning your businesses and career. Enter into them. Enter into them. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to appropriate the prophetic word to your life right now. Appropriate that to your life right now. Somebody's breaking foot now.
Jesus. Precious name, we have prayed. What you don't desire, you don't deserve. I saw an unction on again. I desired it. I craved for it. I said from the depth of my heart, whatever makes it again, again, Lord, I need it. And God honored his word. You know, the power of God does not answer to just a cry, but a thirst. I've seen God's breakthrough power of my life work time and again. And I remember years ago, I went to somebody's boutique in Kaduna, a, woman, a, a widow who was not selling and was frustrated. And on our way to the airport, we just touched the things in our store and on our way to the airport. And the following day, somebody came from Casina and bought over the place. Bought everything off. One of us here at Yanakwaja was selling building materials and nothing was moving and came to church that evening at one a New Era Road. And I put my two hands on his palms and I said, go and lay it on those materials. The following day, a trailer reversed there and said, how much do you have? And bought off everything and gave him a line of supply to a, to a side. Gave him a These are manifestations of the breakthrough anointing. The breakthrough anointing. The breakthrough anointing. Now hear me. If you truly desire this, Task for it and give expression to your task. Because every member of the body is, anointed, is entitled to the anointing from the head. Every member of the body, because the anointing is like the oil of ointment upon the head of Aaron that flows down through his cheeks and his beards and goes down to his skirt and to his foot. So if you are a member of this winning body, then you are entitled to the breakthrough anointing on this commission. Can I hear your loudest amen? If I were you, you testify before the Lord. You know I belong to this body. Spirit, soul, and body. So I'm entitled to the oil that's upon the head. Therefore, Lord, let the, uh, the breakthrough anointing upon your servant. Break forth into my life. Go ahead and pray that prayer, somebody. If you truly belong to this body, then you are truly entitled to the same unction. Go ahead and pray. Lord, let the same breakthrough anointing that's upon your servant break forth in my life. Break forth in my life. Break forth in my life. Somebody's praying. Le Korea Yeshagarabayata Baradia. Let the breakthrough anointing upon your prophet find full expression in my life. Beginning from this hour, Lord, I desire the breaking forth of that breakthrough anointing upon my life. Come on, speak to the Lord right now. Pray from the depth of your heart. Le porique te zozialo e kerike te zozoropo zaporopo ropo 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 rotozo e zoporopo ropo tuze ke te zuzo araba raba ya karaba ya kote se bori bayala e zokotoko e zokotoko koto kotaka te kota koto peke te kete bokita kera yeshe ya. Come on, receive that now. Receive that breakthrough anointing on your life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Let us all rise to our feet. Take up your bottles of anointing oil. 
Open it up. Isaiah 45 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus whose right hand I've holding to subdue nations before him and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two lip gates and the gate shall not be shut. The gate cannot be shut against the anointed. The gate cannot be shut against the anointed. Therefore, no gate of favor shall be shut against you again. Whose right hand I have holding, beginning from today, God by the Holy Spirit will be leading every step of your journey. No business of yours will ever fight for bankruptcy. Yeah. Verse 2. He said, I will go before him and make the crooked pass straight. Nothing is allowed to go crooked for the anointed. Yeah. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. By this anointing, every barrier on your path of breakthrough is crushed. Yeah. Verse 3. It says, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness. From now begin to experience strange open doors. Even the unhidden riches of secret places. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. The anointed never lack proofs. Therefore, by this anointing, I usher you into new realms of proofs. I usher you into new realm of proofs. I got a very humbling letter from University of Ife this last week and said that everything you stand for is our pride. That is, the institution is writing that whatever you stand for is a pride to the nation. The anointed never lack proofs. Therefore, beginning from this hour, your life, your business, your career will never lack proofs. The anointing oil is not a religious emblem. It's a spiritual medium through which the Holy Ghost manifests himself. And David was anointed in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. And he confronted Goliath in chapter 17 and brought him down. Whatever is standing on your path of destiny, by this anointing I command them brought down. I want to recommend that to go for the teaching series of today, you'll be more than blessed. Because the anointing destroys our fears so as to establish our dominion. The anointing destroys pride in us so as to enlarge our coast on the earth. For blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The anointing fires the love of God in us so as to make us live more than conquerors.
because he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. And when the sea saw him, it fled. Jonah was living about. Why are you running? Tremble the heart at the presence of the Lord. These are all breakthrough gems that positions you for unstoppable breakthrough in your life. I therefore decree that beginning from now, your life will never lack proofs. Somebody had no money to get on buses, on taxis, but trekking. And the same person is standing here in the same year. The same year. Giving testimony of millions of Annie's paranum. Abba, is God an unjust God? As the Lord liveth, your story changes from this service. Let me speak to the destinies of the giants in the house. Now listen to this. To keep the grace of God flowing in your life, you must remain small in your own eyes. You must remain small in your own eyes. <laughs> Just this week or last week, they started celebrating or the memorial of the Titanic ship that sank a hundred years ago. And the man, John D. Rockefeller, who was the first American billionaire in history, was a church addict. He was appointed church warden of his church three times. Just like being head of sanctuary keepers, three times. Mm. This man gave up $140 million dollars towards the education program in his church. But it was a church warden. His company won the award of the insurance of Titanic ship. But he felt constrained by the Holy Ghost not to take it. And three months after, the Titanic sank. That would have been the end of his empire. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God and he shall bless. Where you will get to where you can no longer serve God again. I pray you never get there. Amen. But if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That becomes your portion from today. May that grace, that the higher you go, the humbler you become, become your portion today. <laughs> Jesus made himself of no reputation. And see how he carries eternal reputation today. He made himself of no reputation. And God gave him eternal reputation. He made himself of no reputation. And God gave him eternal reputation. I decree that that same spirit of meekness rules your life from this moment. <laughs> There are people here that will beat John D. Rockefeller to that testimony. There are very many on this side. 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 In the name of Jesus. And let me say this again. Every kingdom dream Father establishes your dominion. Every genuine kingdom dream that you see down in your heart and say, Jesus, this is what I long to do. He says, son, I empower you to do it. Every genuine kingdom dream, Father establishes your dominion. God hasn't changed. I saw a tiny lady said she was given $80,000. I said, Jesus, where I sat, I said, this is the kind of thing I want to be doing. He heard me when I said it. He heard me when I said it. I've left that stage. I've left that stage. I've left that stage. I groaned in my heart, Jesus, that is the kind of thing I want to be doing. 
That's the kind of thing I want to be doing. Every genuine kingdom dream further establishes your dominion. Every self-dream, in most cases, ends you up in captivity. But every kingdom, genuine kingdom dream, it happens to you like a dream of the night. My prayer, just like the door has not been shut against me in 31 years, no door of favor is permitted to be shut against you. The anointing for continuous progress for the path of a righteous man as a shining light and it shines more and more to the perfect day. The anointing for continuous progress becomes yours today in the name of Jesus. This ministry has never known a setback in 31 years. Next month will be 31 years exactly. Now listen to me. Beginning from today, the same anointing that kept this ministry growing and expanding and enlarging and scaling heights, that anointing comes on you today. No economic situation has had any negative impact on this ministry, nor on my life. I therefore decree that by the anointing of today, no adverse economic situation in the nation where you live and where you do business will ever have any negative effect on your life. In the name of Jesus. Ever since I began my adventure in tithing, I've never known financial tightness. I have never known financial tightness. Ever since this ministry began on the adventure of corporate tithing, we have been enjoying inexplainable financial fortune. I mean inexplainable, inexplainable financial fortune. I therefore decree that the same titan anointing that's upon this prophet and upon this commission falls on you afresh today. May the same open heaven anointing become your experience from this hour. In the name of Jesus. This oil came with you as a chemical product, but has entered into the sanctuary as a spiritual mystery. Yeah. This is now a medium through which the Holy Ghost manifests himself. Put a little of this on your right palm, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, <laughs> I decree that by this anointing, you'll be turned practically into another man. Mm. That by the blessedness of the anointing, your struggles are ended. The same way things work here without sweat, the sweat of your life is exchanged for sweet. Yeah. I decree today that this anointing on you shall be after the order of Cyrus. Yeah. By this anointing, the Holy Ghost will be leading you to where the answers are waiting. Yeah. Where the businesses are waiting. We are the favor is waiting. In the name of Jesus. By this anointing, the two leaf gates are open for you. And no gate of favor shall be shut against you anymore. By this anointing, gain access to the riches of secret places. Gain access to the hidden treasures of darkness. In the name of Jesus. By 
by this anointing, every crookedness on your path is made straight. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from this hour, begin to operate on the same breakthrough frequency of this commission. Begin to operate on the same web breakthrough frequency of this prophet. In the name of Jesus. All that believe this, place that on your forehead and prophesy your own portion of this anointing on your life. Pro appropriate the prophetic word on your life. It's a new you. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. The breakthrough anointing on this commission is upon your life. The breakthrough anointing on this prophet is answering for you. The breakthrough anointing of the Holy Ghost is speaking on your life. Appropriate your breakthrough. In Jesus, precious name, we have prayed. Take a little of this cup on the lid of your bottles. Everything that characterizes the breakthrough of Christ is in his nature. Amen. And the anointing, among other things, is to uproot whatever God has not planted. Therefore, by this anointing, you know, there was an anointing of meekness on him that resulted in his inexplainable greatness, transgenerational greatness, eternal greatness. As you take this shot, whatever does not look like Jesus, whatever is contrary to your breakthrough status, I command them burnt unquenchably. You see, it takes some level of strength to command breakthroughs. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Men and women of exploits require some strength. Therefore, by this anointing, as you take this shot today, all forces of weakness within your body, I command them, cursed in the name of Jesus. I decree perfection of your health. I decree your wholesomeness. Yeah. The Lord showed me this mystery. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but there's one coming after me. He's mightier than me. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand? He will gather the grain, grains into the banner and burn the child with unquenchable fire. And I said, what? He said, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we are his floor. And the Holy Ghost manifest himself through the medium of the oil. And David was anointed with oil and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. That when we take the short, short what we are doing is engaging the fan and the fire ministry of the Holy Ghost. We are engaging the fan and the fire ministry of the Holy Ghost. So whatever is eating you up on the inside, that no doctor has been able to find, that nobody has been able to help you out of it. Every strange movement in your body, everything that makes you uncomfortable, everything that makes you an object of mockery among men, as you take this shot, I command them destroy. Yeah. All the forces working in Christ, why here or not, I decree they be delivered into your life right now as you take this shot. Yeah. All that believe in the fire and the fan ministry of the Holy Spirit and believe that it thoroughly purges us to be sound, strong, and healthy. All that believe that no stranger can survive the fire of the Holy Ghost. All that believe that the Holy Ghost has power over cancer, over HIV AIDS, over hypertension, over high blood pressure. All that believe that the Holy Ghost has power over everything that is causing heart palpitation, kidney malfunctioning, 
liver malfunctioning, lungs malfunctioning. You believe that the Holy Ghost has power to go through the bones and the marrows and put together your joints and correct all the abnormalities there. All that believe in the fan and the fire ministry of the Holy Ghost. Say with me, I believe. I believe in the mystery of the anointing oil. I believe in the fan and the fire ministry of the Holy Ghost. As I partake of this oil, I believe my body, my system shall be totally purged to enjoy the abundant life that Christ has offered me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my strength. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my health. Thank you, Jesus, for empowering me for exploit. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take a shot of that and glorify God. Lift up your two hands and celebrate Jesus. Celebrate your encounter with the Holy Ghost this hour. Celebrate the touch on your businesses. Celebrate the touch on your career. No door is permitted to be shut against you anymore. The two lip gates are shattered. A new chapter is open to you. Come and celebrate that. The Holy Ghost is opening a new chapter to your life. A new chapter to your business. A new chapter to your career. Come and celebrate Jesus. Magnify Jesus. In Jesus name everyone that brought any point of contact take a portion of that oil and anoint that point of contact right now and wherever that name answers favor erupts wherever that name answers favor erupts wherever that business is mentioned favor erupts as you enter back to your offices in your various careers favor erupts thank you father now anoint it say anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the opening of a new chapter, opening of great doors, is the dawn of a new day, is the beginning of a new dawn. Come on now, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Choir, get ready. Let's celebrate him now before we close. Has God touched somebody here today? Has somebody connected with a vital key here today? We just sing and celebrate him in a few seconds. And while you are doing that, just be appropriate in the rain. The rain is still falling. The rain is still falling. The rain is somebody's getting a telephone call today. A call of favor from somewhere today. A call of favor from Unexpected today. This week is a week of business testimonies. It's a week of career testimonies for you. You are breaking forth into a new room today. Come on, celebrate Jesus together. He has given me the horn of gladness, coming to praise instead of mourning. I shall be found instead of patches, glory in the place of his spirit. He has given me the horn of gladness, coming to praise. Come on. I shall lift 
him up, lift him up, lift his ass Lift him up, 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 lift his ass Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift his ass Oh, I said, Bega, Bega, make your soul like My God is a good God. God is a good God. Thank you, Lord. Lift me up. Up, 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 up. Who lift me up? Oh, I say lift us up. Yes, Lord. And it tossed me around. My God tossed me around. Yes, you set my feet. I know you set our feet. Up on the solid earth. Up on the solid earth. Upon the solid rock, upon the winner's rock, upon the winner's rock, I feel like dancing. Give me talking. Come on, shout hallelujah! I feel like dancing. Shout it. And I feel I shout I feel I go Depart from here today, according to the word of the Lord, like begets like. You can't mistake the child of an elephant for a goat. Like begets 
life. Jesus said to the Jews then, he said, John chapter 8 and verse 39, you are of your father, the devil. And the loss of your father, you will do. But Jesus turned around and said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. Because he's my father, so I'm after his likeness. So everything produces after his kind. Everything. If you want to know the root of a man, check out the fruit. The root of a man, check on his fruits. If his fruit does not look like what he claims to be his root, then it's fake. Then it's fake. Somebody's here. Everybody will know you are truly connected. The breakthrough identity of this commission becomes your personal identity from today. I'm not ashamed of my roots because the fruits are there. <laughs> I decree today that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and by the mystery of transference of spirit, everybody will see the winning identity of your life. In the name of Jesus! Therefore, go and bring home your testimony harvest. Yeah. This week, strange doors open to you. Yeah. This week, every career threat is turned to career triumphs. Yeah. This week, every, break, every business threat is converted to business breakthroughs. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Well, I can't wait to hear your testimonies. I can't wait to hear your testimonies. So please rush your testimonies to us through the email address that you are aware of and we will be glad to celebrate Jesus with you. How many are sure of striking testimonies this week? How many are sure of striking testimonies this month? How many are sure that this must turn to you for a testimony? In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Thank you, Father. Lift up your two hands. Let's give God thanks as we close. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Get down to your businesses and offices and then anoint the places where you operate from. Anoint the places first thing tomorrow morning. Get to your home tonight and anoint your rooms. Anoint your premises. It becomes a no-go area to break down forces. You begin to live in triumphantly the many days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of us who are involved in this great harvest, be blessed in return. Thank you, Jesus. Please be reminded that next Sunday is going to be an impartation service all through our services next Sunday. And so come along with your mantles and you come in for the fresh impartation of the Spirit. We are now our only ghost